All right. Hey there, good to see you. Alex here, and welcome to Office Hours, where I answer your questions about SketchUp. Today's question, SketchUp versus Blender, which is better? This is gonna be a good one, so don't forget to grab your cup of coffee, and let's jump right in. Today's question comes from Steven, and it's probably a question you've been asking yourself. Is SketchUp or Blender the right 3D modeling tool for me? Of course, the answer depends on each person and their particular needs. But I've come up with a list of eight key differences between SketchUp and Blender that will help you decide. But first, let's take a look at Steven's entire question because the context he provides gives me a pretty good idea of what I think will be the right solution for him. Here's what he said. I'm an architect and design anything from new construction to remodels, but I also dabble in custom furniture. Currently, I hand sketch my ideas and then use AutoCAD for plans and construction documents. The problem is, more and more clients ask for 3D renderings, and I've realized it's finally time to catch up and jump into the world of 3D. SketchUp looks like the right tool to learn, but I've also been hearing a lot about Blender. I know this is going to be a big investment to learn a new skill, so I want to be careful and pick the best tool. So in your opinion, which is better, SketchUp or Blender? I've been asked this question before a number of times, so what's the right answer? For some of you, SketchUp will be the better option, and for others, you'll need Blender. It really depends on your unique situation. That's why I came up with a list of eight key differences between the two programs that I'm about to share with you, to help you decide. And if you're wondering which program I'd recommend to Steven and why, stick around to the end of the video and I'll let you know. But for now, let's jump right into the list of eight key differences, starting with number one, what's the difference in price? Blender is open source, so it's completely free to use. You just go to the Blender website, download the installer, run it, and you've got the latest version of Blender. SketchUp, on the other hand, is not open source. Now, there is a free version called SketchUp Free, but it's got a limited feature set and only runs in a web browser. You can get a few more import and export features by upgrading to the paid web-based version called SketchUp Shop. That costs $119 a year. But for the fully featured desktop version known as SketchUp Pro, it's $299 a year. If you're confused, don't worry about it. We've created a video to help you decide which version of SketchUp is right for you, and I've put a link to it in the cards. Going forward in this video, I'll be comparing Blender to SketchUp Pro, unless I mention otherwise. Now for both Blender and SketchUp, the minimum computer requirements are pretty similar. So as long as your computer is powerful enough to run one of them, it will work for either. At the time of this video, that means you need at least a two gigahertz CPU, at least four gigabytes of RAM, and a graphics card with at least one gigabyte of RAM that is OpenGL 3.3 compatible. All right, so right off the bat, Blender is free and SketchUp is $299 a year. But that's not the whole story because there's another investment you'll need to make to get up and running with either tool. That leads me to number two, which is easier to learn. SketchUp is widely considered to be more user-friendly and intuitive than Blender, and that makes it faster to learn. How much faster? Of course, it's not an exact science, but based off of what I've seen from my students, I'd guess you could learn SketchUp about two to three times faster than Blender. You can get started with SketchUp or Blender for free here on YouTube. In fact, I've put a link to a great getting started video for SketchUp, as well as one for Blender in the cards. Then after you get started with the right tool for you, you can always move on later to invest in more professional training. So to recap so far, Blender is free, but you'll need to invest more into learning it. And SketchUp is $299 a year, but you can learn it faster than Blender. Depending on how much you value the time that it takes to learn SketchUp versus Blender, the investment to get started might start to look pretty similar. So let's move on to talk about the differences that will tell you whether SketchUp or Blender is the right tool for creating the thing you have in mind. We'll start with number three, which is easier to use. SketchUp was designed to help you create quick and easy 3D models. Sure, it's got less tools and features than Blender, but the ones it does have are laser focused on helping you create relatively less complicated ideas pretty quickly. Let me give you some examples. SketchUp is the better choice for most types of architectural design, from small residential homes all the way up to bigger commercial projects. Interior designers, landscape architects, and most other design professionals in the construction industry also tend to go with SketchUp for many of the same reasons. SketchUp is also preferred by woodworkers, cabinet makers, 
and designers that need to create more straightforward furniture or products, the type that don't have complicated curves or more organic looking shapes. And for all SketchUp users, there's the advantage of the 3D Warehouse, which contains millions of free 3D models that can be downloaded and used in any project. That means with SketchUp, you only need to model your unique design idea, and for everything else you need to visualize, you can get it from the 3D Warehouse. Now, of course, you can create all the same sorts of projects in Blender, but it might be overkill to spend extra time learning Blender if you only need to create these relatively simple types of models. Okay, so SketchUp tends to be the better choice for most of the easier 3D modeling projects you might have. But don't count Blender out just yet, because what about the harder stuff? That leads us to the next difference. Number four, which is better at creating more complex models? When it's time to build more complicated things, you'll hit the limits of what SketchUp is best at. And when you hit a limitation in SketchUp, it's usually a place where Blender shines. Again, let me give you some examples. Blender is great for creating organic shapes and structures. It's also really good for modeling furniture or products with more complicated or curving surfaces. You can handle some of these same types of things using extensions with SketchUp. But if these sorts of complex 3D models are the main thing you need to create, then you're better off investing your time into learning Blender. Plus, there are some things that you can only do in Blender. Take sculpting, for example. I mean, sure, you can sculpt a little bit with the Artisan extension in SketchUp, but if you're a character designer, you'll be better off with Blender's sculpting tools. Plus, only Blender has tools for rigging and animating characters or other objects in your model. And speaking of animations, only Blender can simulate anything from smoke and fire, to the movement of hair and cloth, to objects that shatter and fall to the ground. Okay, so now you're getting a sense for the types of 3D models that SketchUp and Blender are best at creating, but there are still a few key differences you should know about before you make your final decision. Starting with the next one, number five, which is better for rendering? Imagine you've used either SketchUp or Blender to create the model you need, and now it's time to present it to a client or a colleague. When it comes to presenting your design ideas, you'll wanna create a rendering of your 3D model. Now that can mean a more stylized rendering or a more photorealistic one. So which is better for rendering, SketchUp or Blender? First, if you only need to create stylized renderings, SketchUp styles the feature is probably your easiest option. You can tweak your edge, face, and background settings to come up with a variety of looks. And there's a gallery of pre-made styles that make it simple to get a more hand-drawn or artistic look. Now you can create stylized renderings with Blender too, using the freestyle feature. Like most features in Blender, Freestyle is actually a lot more powerful than SketchUp Styles feature, so you have more control over the look you can create. But Freestyle is a little more complicated to use and takes more time for your computer to process, so it's not ideal if you're looking to create something quick. Of course, there are times where you need a more photorealistic image, with things like lighting, reflections, and realistic looking materials. Now to do this in SketchUp, you need to add a rendering extension. There are dozens of them out there, and they cost anywhere from free on up to several hundred dollars. It can be hard to choose the right one and to figure out how to get started with it. So we created a video about rendering in SketchUp to help, and I've put a link to that video in the cards. Now when it comes to photorealistic rendering with Blender, it comes with those tools included. In fact, it comes with two options. The first is called Eevee, which is a real-time rendering feature. The other is called Cycles, which is a path tracer. Either of them can be used to create photorealistic renderings. So what's the difference between them? To start, you can render your Blender model up to 12 times faster using Eevee than you can with Cycles. So something that maybe takes like an hour in Cycles would only take five minutes using Eevee. But there's a trade-off. You get a more photorealistic result using Cycles. Why is that? Well, Eevee uses a process called rasterization. You can think of it like a fast but really good estimation of what light, reflections, and other elements of the rendering should look like. In many cases, it looks more than good enough for the types of realistic renderings you might need. On the other hand, Cycles uses a process called path tracing. Rather than estimating, it actually calculates each and every ray of light as it bounces around the model. It's as close as we can get to a truly photorealistic result. But it comes at the cost of taking a lot more time for your computer to run all those calculations and to render the final result. It's also worth mentioning, if you use a rendering extension or a third-party rendering application with SketchUp, you'll run into the same real-time and path tracing options, and they'll have a similar trade-off between speed and realism. 
Okay, let me wrap this section up with a few recommendations you can use as a starting point. If you need fast renderings that are photorealistic enough, you really can't beat using Eevee. It's fast, it's free, and it produces really nice results. If you want similarly awesome real-time renderings of your SketchUp models, I recommend you take a look at tools like Lumion, Twinmotion, or Enscape. Now, if you need the most realistic result possible, my top choice for SketchUp is the V-Ray for SketchUp extension. When you compare it to Blender Cycles, technically you can get somewhat similar results. But as a rendering tool, V-Ray has the edge in a few key places that ultimately make it the popular choice. And if you were leaning towards using Blender, but you want to use V-Ray instead of Cycles, there is a V-Ray for Blender plugin too. Now we've only been talking about still images, but what about when you need movement in your presentations? That leads us to the next difference. Number six, which is best for animations? In SketchUp, you can create walkthrough animations. That's where you fly through the model from scene to scene, but these are rendered using SketchUp's non-realistic styles, and the transitions from scene to scene are automatically created which gives you very little control of the path through the model. If you're okay with that kind of walkthrough, but you want it rendered photorealistically, you can do that with most rendering extensions. But it's still just a walkthrough. You can't move objects around. It is worth mentioning you can use an extension like Animator or Sketchy Physics to get objects moving around the model. And you can use tools like Lumion to get photorealistic animations that have pre-programmed motion, like people walking, cars driving, plants and trees moving in the breeze, even rain falling. On the other hand, in Blender, you get every type of animation I just talked about and so much more. You can create walkthroughs only with more control over the path of your camera through the model. Your animations can have objects that move, only you have full control over rigging and animating anything you like, any way you want to. And more than just having falling rain, you can simulate any type of particle system you can imagine. And everything I mentioned can be rendered either stylistically using freestyle or more realistically using EV or cycles. Plus, Blender even comes with video editing capabilities, so you can cut and splice together more dynamic animations. Okay, as you can see from covering advanced 3D modeling, rendering, and animation, Blender's feature set is so much deeper than SketchUp's. But there is one big feature that comes with SketchUp that Blender doesn't have, which leads me to the next difference. Number seven, which is best for 2D drawings and construction documents. When it comes to creating plans, shop drawings, or even a full set of detailed construction documents, you'll want to go with SketchUp Pro. It comes bundled with layout, which allows you to turn your 3D models into scaled, dimension, and annotated 2D drawings that you can submit to contractors or use to get building permits. Blender's just not the right tool to do this kind of work. So if you really need to use Blender for other reasons, your best bet is to take your Blender model into another application to get your 2D drawings done. Now, speaking of building from your model, that leads us to the next point. Number eight, which should you use for 3D printing, CNC routing, and other fabrication? The truth is, SketchUp and Blender are both equally capable when it comes to using them for 3D printing, CNC routing, or other fabrication. In either case, it's your job to understand how to create the right kind of model. The tools aren't going to natively guide you through that process. But if you do it correctly, both applications can output an STL file, which can then be used for the next step of the process. Now I should quickly point out, if your only objective is this kind of fabrication, you might want to look for another 3D modeling application which will guide you through the steps to create a 3D printable or CNC routable model. With SketchUp and Blender, they're really flexible which is awesome, but it means you need to know what you're doing to make sure the model you create will work for 3D printing or CNC routing. Okay, remember when I said at the beginning of the video that I'd tell you what my recommendation for Steven was and why? Well, Steven mentioned he needed a program that could help him with architectural design and construction documentation. So I told Steven I thought it made sense to start with SketchUp Pro, but remember Steven also said he dabbles in custom furniture. This is where I told him that after he's mastered SketchUp, if he has any trouble representing some of the more complicated design ideas, he could always learn Blender for that purpose. And I told him to keep in mind that the 3D modeling skills that he learns in SketchUp will actually help him learn Blender a lot faster if and when he gets to it. So that's it. Congratulations on getting through all eight differences with me. Did you figure out whether SketchUp or Blender is the right tool for you? 
If you did, do me a quick favor and let me know which tool you've decided to learn in the comments below. Or just let me know you found this video helpful by giving it a like. From here, depending on whether you've decided to learn SketchUp or Blender, I recommend you watch one of these two videos. Both do a great job of helping you avoid the things that often trip people up when they're first getting started. If you don't want to miss future videos we put out, be sure to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Until next time, happy sketching!